This episode of the Nerdball Podcast is brought to you by Fort Mags CrossFit. They got classes seven days a week for all age groups, any skill level. Please check out fortmagscrossfit.com for any information. They, uh, they've been great to me, so hopefully people are using them. Hopefully they get new clients. Tell them the nerd boss sent you, and uh, nothing will happen because <laughs> I don't have anything to give. I'll give you a sticker. That's all I got right now, sticker or business card. So uh, please please let them know that you heard this ad on the, on the Nerdball podcast because I'd like for them to get something, you know, something out of this partnership, which hopefully they have. Uh, my guest today, someone I met while I was coaching softball. Her daughter was on my team last summer. Uh, her uh, a real, real good, great, real great person, great mom. We talk a lot about uh, just you know being a mom. Talking about her softball, her nerd, her nerd out thing was you know reading a book, and her daughter was diagnosed with a disease, so she's diving into that uh, a thyroid disease. So she was diving into that uh, heavily now, and then you know we get into where she grew up. All the normal questions, college, college degree, you know, we kind of go go backwards, which is a, a different thing for me. Just, you know, getting all the information a different way, which is which is pretty fun. We talk about her job as a paralegal, um, working in sports marketing, how she, why she's at home, what her, you know, her husband, just being involved in kids, vacations, talk about a lot of stuff. And then, you know, she, she uh, at the end, and please click the link to find tickets. So there's a single de Mayo event that she has for a, a foundation that she's on. So check that out too. Uh, like I said, there's there's tickets to her event and um, just different ways to, to be involved. So so please check that those links in the show notes. Um, but it was a great episode. Um, I uh, it was fun to she was she was uh, an awesome uh, parent softball parent. So it was uh, great to get her on uh, on the podcast. I'm Megan Clark. And this is the Nerdball Podcast. This is the Nerdball Podcast with Lorenzo. There, you got Hunter. it. You didn't even sound nervous before we, we started here. You were like super nervous mm. about it, but we're okay. Everyone's we're all right. Well, yeah. thanks for coming Everybody. on the podcast yeah. today. Uh, we we knew each other from softball last year. Your daughter was. Uh, on my team, yeah, uh, and so- softball. The- I coach a lot of stuff, and mm-hmm. softball is uh, is like it was a brand new thing for me last year, and it's, I'm still trying to like figure it out because it's a lot different than other sports. You did well. Well, well thank you. You did thank very you. well. It was fun, and the coaches I had were good. And, yeah, and that plays a lot of part of it too because you can't because everyone volunteers. You can't really like pick your assistant coaches. Yeah, and you yeah. just you're kind of just looking for people to help, and then they end up being really good. It was a really fun season, mm-hmm. and I think I played before that. She played for Chris Blessing before she played for you. Oh, okay. And she learned a lot, but I think she grew a lot mm-hmm. on the team with you and and Mark and Brittany and everyone. It was it was a good season for her, which yeah, then good. led her into playing travel, which yeah. is why she's there now. Yeah, yeah. Is she having fun, or is she is she she getting better? Can you tell she's improving she's a ton. So good. she pitched for you, yeah. but she's a catcher now. Oh, really? And loves it. Oh, is good. in is like she she'll be practicing with me and she'll be like, throw the ball over here because I want to yeet myself. <laughs> like yeah. throwing some over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but she's she's doing well. Again, she's improving tremendously. Good. So, yeah. Uh, at 10, do they still move every, move move them around different positions? Or are they pretty much in the same spots all the she's time? She's pretty much hit her spots. Okay. She's um catcher, shortstop. Ooh. I haven't been to a game yet because I was out with volleyball stuff. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna go with those two. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's a, I learned too with, with I'm doing travel now. Eight you travel, but we went to that clinic that the high school had, mm-hmm. coaches clinic, mm-hmm. and I asked Coach Demar's there. I was like, at eight you, can we like we should we still be moving around? He goes, yeah, I haven't played everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Learn as much as they can. Yeah, and that's how you know we're. We got some really good drills from there because, yeah. like, you know, last year we were just warming up playing catch. We're not really playing catch. We're just, like, chasing the ball around. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool things that we learned because even now it's still, like, chasing the ball around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but they're playing some great teams, too. Yeah. And they're holding their own. Like, I don't I don't care about wins and losses. I want my kid to go out there and have a great time. Yeah. I want her to have ice cream afterwards. I yeah. want her to learn how to be coached. But, yeah, it's, it's good. I learned, too, that uh, the – Parents and I've umpired baseball for a long time. The parents care about the score more than the kids do because they'll be I'll umpire a baseball game and it'll be twenty to nothing, and the kids are like, "Hey, you know, just talking about whatever." They're, you know, the, the team that lost twenty to nothing, yeah, they just they just got done playing a fun baseball game, and now they're gonna go do something else. You know, I remember growing up, my dad coached my softball team, mm. and I remember him wanting to chat about it so much after the game. 
And I was just like, is the pool open? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I've already turned it off. So I just <laughs> really try not to do that with my own kid. They must have really stuck in because I don't, I don't even know. Maybe my dad didn't because my dad coached my baseball team for – I don't know, six years. Mm-hmm. And my mom was the bench coach and did the scorebook. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember them ever like talking about it afterward. Maybe yeah. they did and I just drowned it out. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think they did. I feel like you wanted to go over every play. Sorry, Dad. Oh, really? I feel like you wanted to go over every play. And I was yeah. like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I got a good hit. Yeah. I just want to go swimming and eat some ice cream now. I'm nine. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, <laughs> you know? <laughs> My dad, my dad's main concern after any practice or game, because we play, I grew up in Toledo, and yeah. his main concern was uh, getting the kids home because they they would get dropped off, yeah. and my dad had a pickup truck, and he would have the entire team in the back, and he would go house to house dropping kids off. I bet the they loved part. that though. Oh yeah, like, oh that, that was, was so much fun like being a back highlight, there. right? I remember, I remember. Maybe that's why my dad didn't yeah. talk to me because I was always in the back, just ha- you know, talking to my teammates. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, we would do that. He would also pull us in the back of the truck and take us to Dairy Queen after the games yeah. and stuff. So yeah, I it's always, it's it. cool. And then you're out, you get out. Like maybe you see friends that aren't on yeah. in sports, and you get out with your team and your uniform yeah. or whatever. So fun. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, so before I forget, because sometimes I do, uh, I got to ask your nerd out question. So what, so something you've been super into, and I won't go in depth because I know you listen. I appreciate you listening. Yeah, uh, love but it. But what's something you've been nerding out about? Lately? Um, This is like, so my oldest was just diagnosed with a thyroid disease. Oh. So really, food is medicine right now mm-hmm. is what we're really trying to hit hard on and learning as much as I can about thyroid disease and Hashimoto's and everything and how everything just affects your body. Your mind affects your body, your thyroid affects your body, your gut affects your body, everything. So thyroid disease and food. There's nothing that gets you more nerded out about something when it's affecting your child. Absolutely. (laughs) And I want to hit it hard, but my 13-year-old is like, can I eat an Oreo? Like she is just like, let me eat what I want. Let me wear what I want. Let me do what I want. And I'm like... Yeah, but could we talk about what ingredients are in Bath and Body Works? Like, <laughs> and she is uninterested. Absolutely. Uh, it, so, is this something that she just have the rest of her life? Yes, um, it will always affect her. I but I've talked to so many people who have been able to heal themselves by changing their environment and their diet and what they're doing. Yeah. So right now she's on a pill every single day and according to her doctor she will be on a pill for the rest of her life yeah but like i said i've talked to so many people who are like i've been able to heal my body mm-hmm. by changing what i'm eating and you know not using products with chemicals in it and laundry detergent and everything but again she's 13 she's uninterested yeah yeah so and, and is the uninterested is she is she un- interested enough where she can still help herself or is it like like you're like really like hey you have to do this stuff um she's old enough to know better and still too young to care okay that's <laughs> right where she's at right now okay. she's a teenager yeah. and she doesn't want to be different and yeah. she doesn't want to oh, like 100%. you know she doesn't want to open up her lunchbox at school and be like oh i have a granola bar mm. and an all wheat not like sandwich or whatever yeah. like she just wants to eat the doritos and do all the things which so we're just trying to slowly integrate new ideas and practices and get rid of the chemicals in the house and just all the things that I can control, I'm trying to control. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if you want a Big Mac, eat a Big Mac. Like, uh, Yeah, I would imagine you can, the, all the stuff you can control goes into play f- mm-hmm. for the other end when you can't control that stuff. You're like, well, I yeah. know I know we're far, far enough to the line Where she can enjoy the stuff she wants to enjoy. Right. And I just want to implement her these like ideas of what you can do so that when she's 25, maybe she'll be like, oh, I remember this. Then then I'll do it. You know, like after her adult brain develops and like she's finally like, okay, yeah, let me take this on myself. But I just want to like give her the tools to succeed right now. But it's it's been so hard. It's been she plays two sports Mm. as a teenager, also has um she's been diagnosed with dyslexia for a couple of years now so like overall she's kind of like just been put through the ringer and she's handled everything so well i could not be more proud of her i think sports helps a lot with that because you're out there practice game whatever and you forget about that stuff absolutely and i have told her because her body with with uh her thyroid disease her main symptom is fatigue like Mm. like full-on fatigue like can't get out of bed and every time i'm like don't go like if your health is more your health to me is more important than you um, 
trying to half do a practice. Yes. Or just like if you need to skip the track meet because you know you have a big volleyball tournament coming up, like let's go ahead and do that. And she's like, no, I have to show up for my team. And she does. And it's it's powerful and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do for yourself? Because like right, I know this like this is a big that's you know that's a great answer because that's what's happening right now and that's right. you know um, and it's almost your job because we talked before the podcast yes. you're you're not you're at home now I'm at home right? yeah and yep. I would imagine this being at home and then this happening it was like oh man this was probably meant to be this then, is right? what I took on it yeah. was my um, not problem but my journey now yeah, even yeah. though it's her journey, like, I am very much like, let me see what I can do to help her. Well, you have to because she's 13. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What am I doing? Yeah. Um, so if I have an hour to myself, yeah. I'm reading a book. Okay. I'm a nerd like that. Like, That's I right. just would yeah. love to just sit down and not talk to anybody <laughs> and just be like, I'm just going to put myself in this story and read this for a little bit. And so there, that's what I'm doing. Are there certain kinds of books you like? No, anything, really. Yeah. yeah. So my neighbor... He just recommended this book called Why We Sleep, Mm -hmm. and it's all of the information as to how your brain works while you sleep and, like, how your brain still – you still know what time it is when you're asleep, like, all these things. Or I could read, like, I don't know, all the popular Colleen Hoover books right now. So, yeah, a little bit of everything. That makes it a little easier, especially like uh, gift giving. If someone wants to give you a gift, yeah, you're like, just yeah. get any book. Any book, <laughs> maybe a Kindle, like gift card, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you like reading book books, like the actual physical book, or do you would you rather? Just so read that's funny Kindle? because I started out on a Kindle because I also try to live very minimal, where oh. I don't want all the clutter in my house. Okay. And so I was always like, give me, give me. I want a Kindle. I don't want all the stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I've kind of gotten into books. Now I'm kind of like, yeah, I want to hold it. I want to. Even this is really weird, but like library books smell so good. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, so, I get it. I feel like that is something my grandmother would have said, and now I'm like, <laughs> and now I'm like, no, they smell delicious. <laughs> no, I get it. I uh, I don't collect comic books. My dad did, yeah, and uh, I had them for a little bit storing them. But the the way they smell, or even walking into a comic comic book yeah. shop when I take my son there, yeah, every once in a while, like yeah, I get it because it does smell like, oh man, I don't. I don't read any of this stuff, but it's it's the smell makes yep. it. Yep. It's something about it. Yeah. yeah, right. It's like a it's like a memory jog or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for me it was just because like, oh my dad collected comic books or whatever. Yeah. You know? So cool. Yeah. I like that. Uh do you how often do you get to sit and read a book? I take time to do this. I so this is so boring, but like my day is I get the kids to school mm-hmm. and then I sit with a coffee for about a half an hour. And I make myself sit down. And then I know that I have to get in the car at 3 o'clock. So at 2 o'clock, I sit down and read for an hour or do whatever I want for myself for an hour. Because then I'm in the car or traveling or getting people wherever they need to be or dinners or just chaos of the evening from at 3 to 9 p.m. usually. So that I just, I force myself to like, just be like, sit down. Yeah. Do this. So that's so so hard for me to do. Yeah, Uh, it is. Andrea, like on the weekends, I'm always busy doing, like yesterday, it was just uh, Mateo and I, Andrea was at a baton competition with Lillian. Mm-hmm. And so we woke up. I had a, Mateo had to build some blocks for school. So we I got up a little earlier. I went outside, did some yard work, then was working on these blocks for a little bit. Then we had softball practice at 1.30. Then we yeah. had baseball practice at 3. Then I came here to set up for a podcast. I had a podcast last night at 6. I didn't get home till about 8.30. Yeah. So I'm like always doing stuff. And Andrew, on the weekends, Andrea's like, just sit down yes. for a minute. Yeah. And, and relax. I was like, and so I'll sit there and she can tell. She goes, you do not want to be sitting around. <laughs> now, I will sit down to watch like, you know, a Guardians game or a yeah. basketball game. Yeah. And sports. especially now I've been, I've been uh, doing sports betting. So I was, yeah. I was up late last night on a game, basketball game. It was a good game, the the Kings and the Warriors. But okay. then I was like, just because I was betting on stuff, you know, watching yeah. it. So I will sit down, but it's got to be pretty for specific reasons. Um, My husband could sit down for all day yeah he could just be like i'm good he works so hard though yeah. so like if his thing is to veg out in front of the tv that's his nerd out thing feel free yeah do it yeah but i could be like hey you guys want to go on a hike you want to go do something and my whole entire family would be like no <laughs> we're good we're gonna hang out here <laughs> do you guys do you guys uh 
I would, because you're so busy, right? And that's the yes. same thing with, with our kids. Like, they're always doing stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, they will go to the park because I run parks, mm-hmm. you know. And so I, if I say, like, hey, let's go to this park or that park, mm-hmm. they know it and they'll they'll want to go there. But My family does not. So yeah. all, even all during COVID, I'd be like, do you guys want to go on a hike? Like, let's go walk. Let's go do something. Yeah. And everyone is like, oh, mom wants to go on a hike again. <laughs> like, just it's become a running joke in our family that uh, I'm just like, let's go do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the good thing, uh, Glass City, the park that I run, is yeah. opening in June. Yeah. And they uh, they can go there and they don't have to hike, but there's all kinds of, they can roller skate. They can, um, the ice rink we, we made, yes. we turned it into, that you was can amazing. roller skate. Did you go to that? Oh, we didn't make it, but I saw tons yeah. of pictures of people who who went yeah. and like, it looked so great. Yeah, it was really cool. A lot of people used it, but we're turning it into roller skating, scooters. Uh, they have we have like uh, three different splash pad areas down Very there. Cool. So um, is this all right. open right now? It'll be open June 9th. Okay, is when the park opens. That's yeah. so fun. Yeah, yeah, so, we'll do that. For yeah, sure. they can go down there and they don't have to worry. Hey, we're not hiking. We're going to a park where you can bring Walking your bathing suit. Walking is so hard, you yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> they do have to walk from the parking lot to wherever they got to go. But for for two kids who are actively yeah. in a lot of sports, they are just like nope. I'm good. Can't, can't walk. <laughs> How are you simultaneously super into sports and lazy? I don't know. And get... very athletic and very <laughs> fit and just so stinking lazy. <laughs> that's funny. No, oh, um, that's fun. Uh, did you uh, grow up around here? No, I grew up in Southeast Ohio. It's called Denison. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not the College of Denison, not yeah. that area. It's Denison, Yorksville. It's about. 40 minutes south of the Canton Can- Can- Akron area. Okay. And um, real small town. I always joke that there's more sheep than people there. Yeah. Like, everybody knows everybody. I had 117 kids in my graduating class, and we were the largest ever. Really? Like just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So nothing really to do there. Yeah. Um, which is why David, so my, my entire family lives there. Still? Still. Okay. Everybody. Um, my dad has six brothers and sisters. They all live within that area. Um, and then my husband's family is from Harbor Springs, Petoskey area, northern okay. Michigan, and his entire family is still there. And so we're just kind of like, we're right in the middle. Oh, like, okay. just <laughs> come and stay, but then you can go. <laughs> like, we love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you get into, because I know you're, obviously your daughters play sports. Were you into yeah. sports too when you were their age? Um, I was, I was I really into softball. About, we talked about your dad. Yeah. You know, softball was my sport. Yeah. And then I, also I was a map maid. Do you know okay, what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I say that and people are like, that's, what is that? <laughs> that's not made, that's no. made up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, think, um, I, I mean, they do like stats and stuff. Stats or they did, I know and, that. um. What else? We would just, boys are gross, in case yeah. you didn't know, especially yeah, in, the, in the high school, <laughs> junior high level. Um, it was like maintaining their crap, like at a tournament. Mm. Like they would just like take off their stuff or like, or like I don't know, making sure that no one got ringworm. Or yeah, yeah. my yeah. favorite part was whenever um, someone got a nosebleed in the middle of a tournament and you just had to go shove a tampon up their nose and then they just kept wrestling. Yeah. Like that was like, that was funny. <laughs> But we also like did like spirit stuff like around the school, mm-hmm. like just a little bit of everything, just like behind the scenes stuff. But it was it was a group of my friends and we traveled with the wrestlers and it was just it was really fun. It was good. Yeah, whenever you can do something with your friends, yeah. you know, it makes it a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want to like as a freshman, you know, for me, I moved to Paris when I was a freshman. Okay. So I'm like signing up for football because my dad said, You'll make friends before school starts. And that, right. You know, and but like for me going to these all this new stuff I knew nobody it yeah. was it was weird and scary you know yeah. but like if you know hey I got three people that are going to do this with me mm-hmm. regardless of anybody else I know these three are and the team atmosphere fun. was great i mean mm-hmm. i know it's like wrestlers and boys and whatever but like i do love what wrestling teaches you about commitment and dedication and like sportsmanship and everything and yeah. that even transferred over to us girls who were technically a part of the team so it was it was a great atmosphere too don't quote yourself you were the part of the team the boys might not no have thought that saw it. <laughs> <laughs> the boys might not have thought it because they're boys right that's right i think but right uh, i don't want to i'm not gonna ask your age but when i was in high school travel sports were kind of getting more and more um well, when you were in softball, was it just softball season? No, it season? was just an in-house league. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, and then obviously you play in junior high and high school. But yeah, there was no travel. There was no, especially in my area. It's such a rural area oh, okay. that like it just wasn't available. Yeah. We didn't even have soccer. We had like 
very minimal sports to pick for pick from <laughs> like i think even in junior high i started a petition to get soccer that's I mean, crazy that's such an easy sport to set up yeah like, no no one was yeah. interested yeah well mm, it's fine i i don't really like soccer anyway I, I wish no one was interested in soccer here we get more football players yeah, yeah. <laughs> soccer is Always been a big deal here. Yes, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, everyone that I talked to was like, I play soccer year round. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's year round now. Yeah, Especially it we, is. Well, we, we're lucky we have two domes. Yes. So they can always find space. But yeah, yeah everything all the time. Right, right. I, I think, uh, yeah, I, don't think my, I don't think my kids do two travel things at the same time. There's a, a girl down the street who does, she could do play travel everything. And yeah. her parents are like, you got to pick one. We, we can't do a travel everything. Right. You know? um, Emmy does travel volleyball right now. Yeah. And that is a lot. And it's intense. And then Olive is doing travel softball. So I feel like even though my kids aren't doing two travel things, like that they're individually doing travel things, it feels overwhelming to me currently. Yeah. I feel like every... And Emmy even said yesterday, she's like, we haven't stopped. <laughs> we I, There's never been a weekend since the beginning of the year that we haven't had somewhere to go or something going on. Because of sports. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. And I know that I would be so sad when this phase of my life is over. But currently, I feel very overwhelmed. <laughs> like, just... You're right. You you will feel like, man, I want to... Because I think I always see Facebook posts where like, you know, you're super busy now. But then when you're not busy, you're like, all right. Yeah, what do I want to do? I want to be busy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm going to have to like foster puppies or something. <laughs> and like, my husband's going to hate it. <laughs> and there's a gap between... Uh, our kids being done with stuff, and then if they choose to have kids, their kids being yes. old enough. There's and that gap can be a while. Yes, I'm hoping to just travel during that whole time okay. and just be like, <laughs> call me, call me when uh, yeah, yeah. when there's a game. Let me know where I need to be. But at this point, yeah. like you're not gonna find me. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I th- I think there's some parents who are in travel sports. Like we're in travel sport. We're not leaving town. We're not doing this. Um, but. I think it's good to have vacations and that kind of stuff sometimes, right? So you know? we just went to Dustin for spring break nice. and rearranged our entire schedule to make it back for a tournament. Really? So we actually <laughs> got up at 4 a.m. on a Thursday, flew from Dustin to Detroit, got in at 2 o'clock, got home, and by the time it was 4, Emmy and I were in the car driving to Chicago. Oh, like, my god! It was the worst. Like... It ended up being fine, but yeah. like the day of, I was like, why the hell did I just not fly into O'Hare? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you that. I think I was worried about not having a car to get home yeah. because we did Uber everywhere. We were right downtown. But There's a train that goes right from Chicago to I looked to up to it, it, and I didn't know what time we would be done. Oh, and I think okay. the trains only run at like 6 a.m. and like 10.30 a.m. Okay. And I didn't want to get done at 4 and then have to wait for the next 6.30 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> train. I did look into that, though. Yeah. Because we've done it. Have you done the train? Uh, we went to New York, and it was an awful experience. Because oh, our kids no. were little. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, my my mother-in-law has taken it quite a bit. Yeah. They're from New York. So, um, um, but yeah, we've done it. I, I remember we went over th- through the night. Yeah. Mateo was fine. He could sleep. Uh, Lillian had to sleep like either on me or on Andrea. So yeah. we didn't sleep. That's a lot. It was not a fun experience. We I've done the train to Chicago, but I was in college and there was... I mean, we just sat at the beer cart. Oh, and yeah. And that's how yeah. we traveled. It's, there. Traveling it was, when you're in college is so different. It's so good. <laughs> just give so me a, a seat to yeah. sit in yeah. and we'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm not going to get a crink in my neck for sitting the wrong way, right? <laughs> I would imagine that's why Megabus is so popular. You can go yeah. anywhere for a dollar. Or yeah, right? <laughs> Never done that. No, me neither. Yeah. The train was fun, though. It was. Yeah. I would do it. And I keep talking. We've gone to Chicago for like long weekends just for fun with mm-hmm. the family. And. We drove, but I was like, next time let's like try the train. Like let's see if the kids would like it or yeah. and isn't there isn't there new like a new like express one? Like a I'm sure there is. Some, Especially because it's so it's Chicago, I would imagine, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Also, I thought that driving to Chicago was five hours and apparently it's three. Oh really? Who knew? Well, I guess that uh, benefited me very yeah, well. Say, especially that day. A couple Thursdays it's ago. A long yeah. Travel, travel <laughs> yeah. Day. yeah. When you when you guys go to Florida, what do you guys like to do? Or what did you like to do there? My kids sit down. They they literally are like, put me on the beach. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Olive dug a hole every day. I saw. I think I saw one yes. of them. You posted yes. it. Yeah. No, every day she dug a hole. <laughs> I see she was doing something that's at least. That's what she wanted to do though. Yeah, she, yeah. Th- but there was an arcade right across the street from us that had 
three different go-karts, putt-putt, an arcade to it, like all the things. And we went one time and the whole time Olive was like, are we going to the beach now? Oh my god. Where are we going? Like, what are we doing? But also, to be fair, she was short enough that she couldn't do most of the the uh, um, go-karts, go-karts on her own. She okay. had to go with someone. Yeah. And so she was kind of like, <laughs> Who wants get to me do out that? of here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to ride with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows I'm a crazy driver in golf carts. Like, I don't let up. I'm yeah. just going to pedal to the metal the entire time, even around every turn. And she's like, I'm not riding with you. <laughs> That'd be fun, though. It's so it? fun. Yeah. I think it's a great time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess when you're really hyper focused on not dying as a, <laughs> as a nine year old. As a nine year old. Yeah. <laughs> Someone get her a helmet. She'll be all right. <laughs> so, just sitting on the beach. Just, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Yeah. Beach we, sitting is really all they want to do while we're there. So, how, so were you able to re- read a lot while you're just sitting there? No, um, I'm hyper aware of my kids around uh-huh. water. Okay. And especially we were in Destin and the riptide was real high that day. Mm, Actually, yeah. the entire week. And so like the, re- the red flag right? was up and like and the, the undertow yeah. was like strong. And so I was like, to your knees, you can go into your knees. And I don't mean to be the fun sponge, but like. Yeah. I just, fun. I've never heard Fun you really sponge. haven't? No. Oh, well, there you That's go. That's so good. Use it for the rest of the day. It's your word of the day. Fun sponge. <laughs> oh, I'm going to use that with my crew. No, but also our friends met us down there. Um, so we were we were just hanging out with some friends while we were there, too. It was yeah. good. We went to Texas over spring break. Yeah, I saw that. We did a lot of stuff. Like, we were everywhere doing all kinds of stuff. And the kids were troopers, you know, for them. Yeah. The best part about being a kid is, we you know, do all this fun stuff. And then we get to sleep in the car on the way home, you know? Yes. Um... <laughs> I did listen to the podcast that you guys all talked about, Disney. Oh, yeah. My yeah. kids hate it. Like, love it, but hate it. Because, oh. I mean, even <laughs> even at, I think the last time we were there, Emmy was maybe 11, yeah. and she was like, do you have a stroller? Like, I just, <laughs> put me in a stroller. I don't want to walk this entire time. And Olive had croup. Oh, So, geez, like, yeah. it was kind of like, just sit down again. Yeah. So, but that, I love Disney. That's my I know. I know. <laughs> So we fun. decided we are not going back until our kids can drink around the world with us at okay. Epcot. <laughs> that is the next time we will do a Disney trip. Other than that, we're done. I wanted to go again, but we have all these other things planned. That Did you guys also later. discuss the Disney Cruise? We we looked into it, but it's very expensive for what you get. Like We'd, I'd rather spend that money on Disney World. We did it, and it was... Oh, you did it? Not great. Yeah. It was not great. It, I mean, it's it looks cool, but for the money, I think it's just maybe better spent yeah. just at Disney World. I will I will say this though. We went um we booked it whenever COVID was like going out and yeah. then like the Omicron virus came through. Yeah. And so whenever we booked it, there the restrictions weren't really as high as what they had been. And we were like, okay, that's all right. And then they put all the restrictions back in because of Omicron. So yeah. like every 15 minutes, the kids had to get out of the pool and like walk around and get back in line and then get back in the pool. Really? It was so bizarre. Uh. It was so bizarre. And they did not have a whole lot of on ship activities for yeah. like my 11 year old. And then Olive was just like, no thanks to everything, really. Are we going back to the. The best time that they had was we had a curtain in our room. And they like pulled the curtain and like did whatever they wanted on one side, and Dave and I like w- like took a nap uh, on the other okay, side, okay. and that was like they they were like doing puppet shows and stuff in between the curtain, <laughs> like that was what they loved to do. And I was like, do you know that there's like Mickey Mouse downstairs, right? <laughs> like they were like, no, we're this gonna- is expensive. We could hang a curtain in our room. yeah yeah. We could hang house. a curtain <laughs> in the playroom, and I will sit and let you do any puppet show you want. Yeah, and I would it would save me thousands of dollars currently. We also had terrible weather. Like yeah, we went to that Castaway too. Bay and mm-hmm. everything was closed. The only thing we could do was ride a bike around the island, which took us 20 minutes. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, what do we do now? Yeah. Like, yeah. So we, we, I, we went on one cruise for our honeymoon years ago and it was, I loved it. It was so much fun. It was just Where did Andrew you go? and I. We went to, we went, we took a carnival. <laughs> it was carnival. Mm-hmm. We went to, uh, I always forget if it's Eastern or Western Caribbean. Or oh. Caribbean. I can't remember, I but it's one of anyway. those. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, we did, I think I told the story on here before we did a kayak, mm. but it was a double kayak. So we, we were both in it yeah. and I never, I'll never do that again. It's, I call it the divorcer cause it's, you're just like, like kind of not with the yelling, but sternly talking to each other. Like you're tipping it. No, you're tipping it. We got to go. Like it was, it was not fun. And then you have to coordinate who's like paddling on what side yeah. or you're just spinning in circles. Right. Yeah. And then I was afraid to fall in because 
I'm not a very good swimmer. Also, yeah. I wasn't sure how I was going to get back in it because we got in it when we could yeah. stand and step in it. And yeah. then if we were in the water, then we got to f- pro- propel ourselves. Like, I don't think yeah. that was going to happen. Uh, we, Dave and I did the Alaska cruise on Norwegian okay. um, for our anniversary. Our My travel agent talks about that one. I highly recommend it. Yeah. But there was a, we were the youngest couple there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of... By a lot? 50, 60, 70 okay, okay. year olds. Yeah. However, there was this amazing room called the observatory that went all around the front of the ship that you could, there's windows. It was just windows. And all mm-hmm. you could see was like the glaciers. It was beautiful. And David would be napping because he would have too many cocktails. And I would get to go read a book. <laughs> and I was like, this, I could, this is fine for me. And yeah. David's like, what are we doing? What, like, what are we, because he, I mean, on vacation, he's like, let's, let's explore. Do let's do yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Not a ton, but a little bit. And I was like, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to go watch some scenery go by and read my book. See, so, that's, <laughs> that's your kids right there. It was perfect for me. <laughs> um, I would love to. But we also did, we did ATVing mm. um, through the mountains in Alaska and stuff. That was so much fun. Yeah. But being that we were the youngest couple, we were also the ones that were being a little bit more wild on the ATV. <laughs> so we like, you travel up to the top and you stop and have a, a picnic lunch with everyone. And everybody else's ATVs are like still pristinely clean and like Dave and I is at the back and we are just all mud like the whole cart is mud all of our gear is mud everything because we were just trying to like just just go ramp everything yeah Yeah. yeah. (laughs) it was was funny yeah it's not your stuff you're gonna no it's fine yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's awesome we we try to take uh family vacations because those are the best uh when you have everyone involved but man those vacations it's just Sometimes just I just call it a new. relocation. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, this is too overwhelming. I just feel like I'm doing the same stuff, especially the last couple of vacations that we've gone on. When we've gone to Florida, my husband will go visit like coaches that he knows and go hit up a basketball practice somewhere. And he'll be like, I'll just, I'll be back. I'll be back in a couple hours. And I'm like, cool. I'll just hang out here with both the kids by myself. And you took the car. So I don't. <laughs> I don't have any way to get anywhere. Yeah, so, yeah. all right. <laughs> so sometimes to me they're relocations, yeah. but we do love the. I I love the family trips. Yeah. My husband is usually like, "Do you guys do you want to go somewhere? Just the two of us." But for me as the mom, I'm also like, "Well, now I have to coordinate who's coming, I have to coordinate rides for everything." Like for me, I'm just like, "Just take the kids with us." Yeah. <laughs> Our, when we do vacations, we try to do it when they're not busy. Yeah, which if, is never. if we're gonna leave them, yeah, which is never. Or uh, mm-hmm. less busy. Like, I think we went to, Andrew and I went to Florida in uh, January. Mm-hmm. And it was basically a, a, lo- a long weekend. Mm-hmm. But it was like, all right, well, we only have to worry about baton. So let's go right now. So then there was a couple of baton practices and that was it. Yeah. So it, it's less on us. And they're older. So you're, you're not as, like, you're still concerned for your kids. But you're not as concerned. Especially if you're leaving them with relatives. Then it's like, oh, I mean, they're for not For school, be- though, it's so much harder when they get older to pull them from school to go do stuff. Because yeah. we have been... Oh, this is without the kids. So I was arranging, oh, like, arranging okay. stuff. okay. Yeah, for there. them there. Um, I, I don't understand. Like, there are parents that we know that will be like, yeah, we're on spring break this week. And then two weeks later, like, they didn't go anywhere. But then two weeks later, they're on a vacation all week. And We've like, done that. How, like, it, it's weird to... Like, how do you, like... Does the um, school not care or like... No, or like, I haven't had anybody who is like mad at us. Yeah. A lot of people are very much like family vacations are important. Yeah. Family time yeah. together is important. Exploring the world is important. I've never had anybody. And if someone did come at me, I'd be like, yeah, I just don't really care. I'm going to take my kids. <laughs> I did um, talk to I did talk to one of the coach, one of my other coaches who did that. And they got a letter in the mail saying, hey, if you this or that. And he called, they talked to someone at school and they're like, and they basically said, hey, the state makes us send that letter. Yes. Yeah. We have gotten that truancy letter for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. But they also, again, but they didn't, they're like, we just have to do it. Yes. Yeah. That's what I've been told every time. Yeah. Um, we, it would just worked out with my husband's schedule more than anything else, mm-hmm. which is why we took them during school because he, again, he is the one that's working right now and he's the one that kind of controls our finances. So if he needs to be at work, he needs to be at work. Yeah. And so that's why we were like, okay, whenever you have time off, then we'll go. What does he do? He, um, well, currently he's working, he does real estate, okay. um, development, but then he also helps out with some travel basketball programs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did he, you talked about coaches and stuff. Did he play basketball? Yes. He played at Ferris State. Okay. And then he has coached quite a bit. We moved to the area because he was coaching at Owens. He was the head coach at Owens for oh, a while. Oh, nice. So, yeah. yeah. And then he's kind of just, 
uh, picked up some jobs here and there and kind of jumped on little ships and kind of keeps in it, but loves it, but does um, real estate development as like his main focus. And neither of your girls play basketball? Olive does. Oh, nice. She loves it. Yeah. I think Lillian said she she saw her at that camp maybe last summer. I don't remember. Yeah. She saw a lot of people there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, She loves it. She's got some good handling skills. She can like... Left and right dribble. She can do a whole lot. David, and he's not pushing anything on her. Yeah. He's like, if you want to go out, if you want to ask me to go out and work with you, I will. But like, he's like, mm, whatever, just have some fun right now. Yeah. We're nine. It's fine. Um, but she <laughs> tends to, um, she's not as aggressive yeah. as like what a lot of the other girls are. And then she seems to rainbow when she dribbles. She just rib- rainbows the the three point line yeah. back and forth that's all she does oh, like okay, like okay. we're not attacking anything right now <laughs> like just <laughs> that that's hard to teach you're either aggressive or you're not yeah. or it, it very seldom do you do you like get more aggressive yeah emmy is not she is when she's fired up about something but yeah. she's not which is why volleyball is a good sport for her because it's very you're on this side of the court you're not touching anybody yeah um, I think if someone were to throw an elbow at her, she'd be like, I'm done. I'm not doing <laughs> this. Like, yeah. she is just, she wants everyone to be happy and is just not that person. Olive, on the other hand, did have a girl who um, was pretty intense with her on the court. And I thought she was going to start pushing. Like, I thought, like, <laughs> oh, this might fire her up a little bit. And she she didn't. I just, sometimes I never know what you're going to get with her. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, because I know what she's like at home and she's a spitfire. She like, was so quiet really all the time in softball all the time she's got one-liners like you guys wouldn't believe yeah oh, oh man. man she is <laughs> sassy yeah. like just she remembers like things that happened to you and she will bring them back up in like a punchline yeah and just zing you <laughs> all the time <laughs> like, <laughs> and from a nine-year-old that makes it even that much it's funny. hilarious yeah. It's, and, and the rule in my house is if you can make me laugh, you're probably not in trouble just because I find that funny. And she gets away with so much shit because yeah. I'm just like, yeah, all right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She's fun. Does your husband know that rule too? He, he has his own set of rules. <laughs> I was going back to that aggression thing. I Mateo played f- uh, tackle football for the first time this past fall and I was like – Interested to see how he would be because yeah. he is not aggressive. He's very gentle. Uh, it's probably because his parents were always yelling at him, like, don't hurt your baby sister. Don't hurt you anybody. Know? Yeah. 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 Um, but he did all right. And he says he likes def- he liked defense better, which I did not because I wasn't aggressive at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd much rather play offensive line. I could, I knew what my job was. I could focus, you know, and defense, you just go. You mm-hmm. know? But he said he liked it. So, We'll see where that develops because he's going to be giant. So, did you so. play in college? No, I had the opportunity, but. Uh, you got to love it. And yeah. I just like to play. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think there were, that's where Olive is kind of going towards for softball. Yeah. She she really likes it, and she likes to be on the team and do other things. She loves to run drills. Yeah. But then to play a game, she's kind of like, hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Uh, Mateo played travel baseball the past two years, and then this year he's playing house again, and he's having yeah. fun. He's yeah, just, He's like, I just want to play. I think it'll be fun. So, so how do we get her back into a house league? Because that already – Clothes, yeah, it right? Would, it would have to be for next year. And just if you so it. next year, pop on yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. But mm. it's, yeah, it's, I'm, there's, there's still, like I said, if she likes to do it, she'll still have fun. Yeah. It's just on a lower scale. Yeah. Which know? is, I think, where she wants to be. Yeah. Um, she also, the neighborhood boys tried to talk her into flag football. Oh, uh, she tried to be good. She at that. might try to hit that up next year, I yeah. think. Or this year, the end of this year. Yeah. So it's we'll fun. Mateo's been playing since he was five. Yeah. He plays. Depending on what what he's doing, like before he started tackle football and he would play like three times a year yeah. in the different seasons, but now he takes fall off because he plays tackle football. Um, and then last year he took the spring off because he did travel baseball. But now Are there a lot of girls year. in that program? Um, there's some. I actually had, I recruited one. I coached, I recruited one on my team because she lives down the street from me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's there's some. Okay. Um, there's uh, a couple all-girl teams too oh, okay. because they all know, know each other and everything but oh good information can yeah. i have that information when we're done here yeah yeah i can give you the name <laughs> yeah. of the guy who runs it too yeah absolutely so, yeah but it's fun. it's a lot of fun and depending on on whatever you know season it is you could have like late night games like i think mateo plays all his games on friday and the earliest one is like 8 30 or mm. 9 and some of them are at 9 30 or 10 so <laughs> it just depends <sighs> I don't know if we could do that. It just depends, you know. It, it could be. I mean, some of the leagues he played in were 
Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings. Yeah. So it's just however the schedule We've works. We've always out. tried to keep our Fridays clear. Yeah. Always. For, I don't know. It's just like the day that we're just like, just, we're just going to decompress for a second. Yeah. So it, there have been times where Alice's softball practice is from 6.30 to 8. And she's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, mom. My bedtime is 8.30. <laughs> like, that's really, it's really hard to come home and take a shower and get to bed by 8.30. Yeah. <laughs> like, so. There's some wiggle room there, I think. You know, I think you'd be I right. Think be fine. <laughs> she also is the girl that, like, if she has so her game is at noon today. What time is it? Nine. Yeah. She probably has her jersey on. Oh, She's really? She's probably <laughs> in full gear, waiting yeah. for me to do her hair when I get home. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. She, yeah. Hyper prepared. Yeah. Well, Lil, Lil can be that way too, but she she also can be forgetful. Like, like yeah. I think there's been times where she's going to a baton or something and then she doesn't have her baton. Like, wait a minute. This is specifically what right. you're doing here. What we do you- went to go try out for Magic, um, their travel league, yeah. and we got halfway to Holland before she realized that she didn't have her cleats. She only had on um, Crocs. Yeah. So I was like, this is not going to work. So like, there are those moments too, but sure. like, she was just... <laughs> She can really take care of herself, that's for sure. She's very independent. Well, that's good. Yeah. Because I'm always, I, I'm pretty sure Lil will be fine as an adult because of how she is now. I'm, right now, it's terrible sometimes. <laughs> but I was like, just when you're an adult, this will play into that. And yeah. And it'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Olive, I'm not concerned about Olive going to college. I'm not concerned about any of that. I feel like if someone messes with her, she will punch them in the face <laughs> and move on. Like, I think she'll take care of herself. Yeah. It, it, did her older sister, like, like prepare her for that kind of stuff which oh they fight all the time yeah, yeah. all the time <laughs> i mean my kids will come to me daily yesterday four times each kid came to me and was like sissy's being a booger because <laughs> <laughs> they were mad at each other all day and it's just communication yeah it's just instead yeah. of saying please stop you they yell at each other i know it always goes right to yelling yes! it's so frustrating yes <laughs> But I keep telling them, like, you can't continue to be an asshole and expect your sister not to be an asshole. Yeah. Like, someone's got to change, like, the dynamic here. It's got to start somewhere. Nobody wants to do that Nobody part, is though. interested in that. <laughs> nope. That's not fun. No, uh-uh. Really I don't want to lose. Right, exactly. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at. It's good. So you, you talked about your, you are at home now. What did you do before you... Were at I was a paralegal in a law office in downtown Toledo. Okay. I loved it. Loved it. If anybody law needs um, law, Bruce Borst, the yeah. Borst Law Office, please go call him. <laughs> um, I loved it. I love Bruce. He was amazing to work for. He was very family first. So I didn't have a set schedule if... If I wanted to do a kid's classroom party, I did that before I would do work. Like that always came first, which was phenomenal. Um, I did personal injury. And during COVID, if no one's driving, nobody's getting into accidents, right? And so my caseload went way down. And at that point, my kids also needed me at home. And my husband took a different job. And so like... That's where I felt like I was needed, and it kind of just worked for our family. But we left it on very great terms. Like, I have said to him a thousand times, if you need help with anything, please let me know. Yeah. I will come back. Um, and he's kind of said, you know, if you ever need a job, reach out. Yeah. So we left it on good terms. That's it was, good. I loved it, though. It was, it, was so, it was cool to be a paralegal, though, because I knew all the details, but I didn't have to deal with all of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you knew all the gossip. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> Did you go to school for that? So I actually went to Bowling Green and got a sports and communications degree. Okay. And the intention was to do like marketing for like minor league baseball, which yeah. is what I really wanted to do, which I got that job. Then I got pregnant with Emmy and they terminated my job there because I was pregnant, which then turned into a lawsuit, like, which then right. got me into law. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of all just spiraled. Um yeah. So then Emmy was born, and then I kind of wanted to find something that was a little bit more universal. Because whenever I graduated, I graduated in 08 from college. Whenever I graduated, it was kind of like the market was going down, and marketing programs were being cut across the board for all sports. Like, oh, they just, yeah. the, the funding was not there. Um, so then I felt like I wanted something that was a little bit more universal, because I didn't know where we were going to land. My husband was still kind of pulling jobs from all over the place at this point. We, we've moved quite a bit. Um, so I just, I did a paralegal certificate through U of M and then because I already had the bachelor's degree, oh. that kind of equaled out a, a degree. Oh, nice. But, yeah. But the experience in the field is really what you want. That's uh-huh. where, that's where all of your knowledge is going to come from. Are you allowed to talk about this lawsuit at all? Technically no, but I feel like I'm. <laughs> Why do I- 
Uh, well, no, then you're I, gonna get a letter in the mail and say, "Hey, you owe us money back." This was <laughs> so long ago. This was 14 years ago. I think yeah. we're good. Um, I got hired. Let me think about this. I got hired in December, but I didn't start until February. And so within that time, I found out I was pregnant. I went in for my first day, and I—I I mean, pregnancies were terrible for me. Yeah. And so I knew I was going to be sick. I knew, but I was still willing to be there. <clears throat> And I went in my first day and I did the, the tour and I got my desk and I did everything. And then I was like, hey, I just want to have a meeting with you really quick. I want to just be honest with you. Told them that I had found out that I was pregnant and they were like, yeah, congratulations. Um, about an hour later, my boss came to my desk and was like, hey, we need to just go in the oh HR meeting. God. Yeah. And so I go in there thinking I'm signing like my my documents. I think I'm signing my paperwork yeah. and everything. And they were like, you know, because of your pregnancy, we're just going to have to let you go. They said because of your pregnancy? Yes, because of your situation. We're going to have to situation. let you go. Situation. Yeah, the um, situation. Then cops came and escorted me out of the building. <laughs> like my five foot two stature is about to like raise some hell in oh this place. Oh my gosh. It was bizarre. But then I went home and took a nap because I felt exhausted from being <laughs> pregnant. And then I woke up and did something about it. <laughs> That's crazy that they, because sometimes, I mean, I'm sure that happens all the time. Even, oh, yeah. even nowadays, like. You're getting fired because you're pregnant. But they say for other reasons. Yeah. Right. They they said to me because of your situation. Yeah. Did you did you ask like what's what are you talking about? What's my situation? No, because at that point I was twenty four and was kind uh, of like ah, okay, for- yeah, like I don't I didn't know what questions to ask. I didn't know and even at that point in my life, I was probably not advocating for myself. Yeah. I was not standing up. It was just not who I was at that point. So, um, no, I kind of just took what they said and left the building and then like processed it and then got an attorney. Yeah. So. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Uh, it is crazy. <laughs> um, and then that you never went back to, you said you never went back to that sports. No, stuff, right? no. And then I did while I was pregnant, I did marketing for a, a local hospital in my hometown. And then, um, David took a job coaching in Flint, Michigan. So we moved up there for a couple of years and then from there, got the head job at Owen. So we moved here. Uh-huh. And I would be okay if we just stayed. Yeah. Like, that would be great for me. Yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been here then? Oh, my gosh. 10 years? Okay. All right. Yeah. So most of the girls' life. Well, most oh, of yeah. All yeah. of Olives. And yes. Most of, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we ever, to were actually move because David took another job or something, it would probably be the hardest thing that we would do. Yeah. But I told... So my rule is that if Emmy's in high school, we'll stay. And you can go do the job that you're going to do and we'll just make it work. Yeah. Because, and especially at this point, and I'm coaching, I'm talking coaching positions, like if he were to get a, a, yeah. a decent coaching job somewhere. Um, at this point, I was like, I, I know what you need to be making to make it worth doing this. Yeah. So we would be able to afford like plane tickets to like get there and come back and, oh, like, yeah. and like visit each other or whatever. But yeah. yeah, I don't, I will not move my kids when they're in high school and... I just like there's just certain things where I'm just like we'll make it work. We're fine. Yeah. We have a very great relationship. We can we can handle this. Yeah, that's a lot. It'd be a lot to move. I mean, oh, like yeah. I said, I moved to a new place when I was a freshman. Yeah. And I think it's harder. I I don't know. Maybe because I'm a guy saying it, but I feel like it'd be harder for girls. For I don't know why. I just feel like it would be. I think so too because I think girls show their emotions just a little bit more, but also just the mean girl dynamic of like. Middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. I don't know if boys go through all of that, but it is terrible. And then to like put yourself in like a new position with like and figure out, okay, who do, who are my people and who do I want to avoid? And yeah. that everyone already has their clicks, and I'm trying to like get in and like so. Yeah, I think it would be terrible. I I would be okay to stay, but I would also, <laughs> to be completely fair though, I do really hope that my husband like gets his dream of a, his dream job. Like yeah. I would fully support that and I would fully go. Like I do really hope that he does. Is he still actively like trying to yeah. find like, yeah. like does he want to coach a college or what? Yeah, he would like to. He would yeah. like to do some sort of um, college basketball program. Okay. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. When uh, I want to go back to your college, uh, what what made you decide to, to go to BG and, and why for – 
for so sports. My Obviously, ha- you played softball and we're yeah. into that. But. I, I was not playing softball whenever I went to college. I, yeah. I stopped playing before that just because of health reasons I needed to. And your your hands up here, you, keep, you talk a lot and move them. They yeah. appear tiny to me. Yeah, in my mom's hands. Oh, okay. They're really itty bitty. <laughs> Not to point that out, but I just, like, you're talking a lot with your hands, and I'm like, her fingers look Those short. Those are really small. <laughs> um, I went to Bowling Green because my parents told me they would not pay for out-of-state tuition, and it was uh, the farthest that I could go. <laughs> <laughs> without leaving the state. I'm right. not even kidding you. We okay. went. We even tried UT, and yeah. UT could not guarantee on-campus housing for oh. freshmen. I was going to say, you could have went a little bit further. No, but, okay. we, tried. Yeah. we tried. But I had a cousin who had already gone to Bowling Green, and I had gone and visited, did like the Little Sibs weekend, and loved it there. Yeah. And ever since then, I was like, yep, this is my place. And nice. even a cousin younger than me, Sarah, who, who used to come to all the games. I don't know if you... Yeah. She actually followed me to Bowling Green also. Oh, nice. So we've kind of all trickled there a little bit. I lived there for two years. I didn't go to school there, but I lived there, and yeah. it was it was a lot of fun. I liked it. Yeah. We would always go to, um, uh, what is it, 149? Yeah. We'd go there a lot. Uh, I liked that place. I also liked Kermit's. I don't know if you yes, there. for breakfast. Yeah. Yes, that was good. That was a good spot. We lived uh, down the street from there, uh, Andrew and I. So we yeah. walked there on weekends sometimes. Did you guys ever go to the quarry? We never went to the quarry. Oh, it was never. gross, but so much fun. Yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> swim very well, so I'm not one to just jump off. Right. Right. <laughs> right. As an adult, I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> but like as a college student who was probably six beers deep before we even started going there, yeah. I was like, "This is so much fun. This is the best. This is so much fun. <laughs> this is the perfect life." Yeah. Yeah. Um, I loved Bowling Green, mm-hmm. and I think what I really loved about it was the lack of responsibility that I had while I was yeah, there. But yeah. let's be honest, it was it was so much fun. I'm still really good friends with my my girlfriends from there. We try to get together like twice, like every other year. Oh, nice. We try to travel somewhere. We just got back from Austin. We did a um, a girls' weekend there. Yeah. So. I did a, a guys' weekend there in Austin uh, last June. Oh, we okay. Were we, were, we we did not leave the house. Like we just did. Really? Had a had a pool. Uh, it was on a lake that was drying up, but we could still like kayak out yeah. and stuff and do stuff. But yeah, it was fun. We, we didn't go into the definitely city hit up all the bar scenes. Yeah, we didn't do any just, of that just stuff. I fun. mean, we drank. Yeah, we yeah. Just, yeah. We didn't go anywhere. Yeah. It was, it was fun. fun. It was yeah. like random fun. Like it was like we, there was a group that were from England and we had a massive Jenga tournament with them. And it was <laughs> intense. Random. It was so random. It was so fun though. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun. Um, wait, one of the other podcasts I listened to, your friend was saying that his favorite late night place was Pita Pit. Oh, yeah. And I was just yeah. so disappointed. I'm sorry, friend. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's right. He won't listen to this. <laughs> uh, Pita, uh, and I, I don't know if we talked about that or not. I think Pita Pit was really good at 3 a.m. when you're drunk. Like that's. I wouldn't go there. Uh, I don't think I ever went there sober. It was always I, at, after I, I was I think I'm the opposite. Yeah, I ate it like it was Subway. Oh, like you no. know what I mean. And I, <laughs> what my my biggest thing what we would do was I would keep ten bucks for the end of the night, and yeah. I would stand outside of Taco Bell, and I'd be like, "I'll give you ten dollars for whatever's in your bag for whoever just really? came out," and they would give it to me. Why would you just go order something? Because it would take too long. That line was oh, like, "Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right." So you're right. long, yeah, and I wanted yeah. to eat it while I'm walking, and I'm not picky. And it's so all I the was, same: yeah, beans, rice, meat. Yeah. yeah. So I was Jeez. like, "Here's ten bucks," and it was probably like. Three dollars worth of food, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, "Here's ten bucks if you just give me your bag." And they'd be like, "Yep." So oh I would get food and gosh. start walking home. <laughs> that's funny. <Yeah. laughs> we also made really good friends. Do you know that Circle K that's right on the corner by like Kamikazes? Yeah. Yep. So we made really good friends with the tow truck guy yeah. that used to sit there and wait to tow all the cars after the bar hours. And he would drive us home. Really? Yeah. We would just go chat with him every once in a while. And then he'd be like, come on, we'll take you home. So then it became a thing. We would go to Taco Bell, yeah. hand someone some money, grab a bag, go to <laughs> go to the tow truck guy, give him some of our random Taco Bell. Oh he would take us home. Gosh. It was so rare. It's so fun. That's crazy. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, you're right. No, zero lack of responsibility. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And total trust in humanity, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would not happen now. You're not going to kill us, right? You're no, right. No, we're All good. Right, go. We're good. Here's some Taco Bell. <laughs> I just get us there safely. <laughs> we uh, we went last year for homecoming. Yeah. It was my sister's birthday, and it was a lot of fun, and we decided we we're going to do it every year. So if, if you're interested. Yeah, we would uh, love to go. We'll, we'll be out there. Uh, in that big green space behind. Yeah. But it was fun. We were there pretty much all day. Yeah. It was so hot, uh-huh. too. And since BG, I don't know if you know, they flipped their homestands. 
No, I didn't know so, that. So, yeah, because uh, this is what I heard. I don't know if it's true. Mm-hmm. The way the TV was set, the TV, when they're on TV, it's set up where the cameras were looking at the field, but they would show the away side. So there was never oh, anybody there. Oh, yeah. So they flipped it. So the home side was what's on TV. I just always assumed there was no one there. Well, I mean, that too. <laughs> the homecoming was pretty packed and it was hot and someone was beating on us, but, yeah. but it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I was a part of the rugby world and yeah. um, the guy that I was dating in college was a rugby player. And so my Saturday mornings were spent on the pitch watching rugby instead of in the football field. Yeah. So, yeah. We probably, we were, we were almost most likely down there at the same time because probably, I, oh, yeah. I, I live there. I graduated high school in 03, mm-hmm. and then I think same. I... We're I think, the same age then. Yeah. Yeah, we were definitely down there at the same <laughs> yeah. time though. Yeah. I, was, I, just, I just had my super senior year, like the real truth oh, that okay, I am, yeah. so... <laughs> just. We, uh, I played rugby because I went there for a semester, and then they told me not to come back, but... Uh, so I played rugby for a semester. Uh, what my year? freshman year. My freshman year, whatever. So 03. Oh, oh, yeah. Fall of 03. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it was cool. I had a lot of fun. It was... Yeah. Uh, Roger, Roger... Uh, Drawing a blank on his last name was the coach. I can't remember. I, the only person I remember, his name was Vince. Oh, Vince Vinny's, Strapoli yes, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, That's we the were there at the same time. <laughs> and then there was a guy, he was, I remember he was a coach. He was a black guy who yes. looked like Hootie. Oh, yes. What was his name? <laughs> and somebody got in trouble because they kept calling him Hootie and he ma- they made him do like push ups or All something. All of those guys have so many fun nicknames, though. <laughs> so it was, oh, I can't even like, did you, what about Brian? Um, Begins with a K. Shoot. I'm going to draw a blank. We'll talk about yeah, it later. I can't remember. But yeah. it, was, it was fun. And it, it's also funny because I did a podcast. It'll it'll come out on Monday. But I found out that somebody I work with, we definitely threw shot and disc against each other in high school. Fun. Yeah. And, and I, we have no recollection. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just because of the years. But that's funny. Yeah. That is yeah, it was funny. It was fun. And I remember them... When I, I've never played rugby, but I wanted to try it, and you know I'm a big guy, and they just like, all right, well you're big, yeah. you're gonna do this job, and I kept telling, I was like, I'm pretty quick for yeah. as big as I am, yeah. And then I got the ball one time and took off, like you're right. I said, I am, yes, I told you, I'm quick. I just so you know. someone that would have been there is Tyler Long. Hmm, I don't know. Um, I don't remember. He went to high school with me, but then played. He was already on the rugby team, and it's like how I kind of got to know people playing oh, okay. rugby to yeah. start with because he was like my one contact person yeah. beyond the girls that I had met uh, in uh, at Bowling Green. So. I heard, uh, I think I was talking to, it might have been Lexi Marshall, uh, about the rugby team because they were kind of involved in that. And uh, they talked about uh, either her or a friend I was talking to about the girls' rugby team. Mm-hmm. And they had this boot Yes, that we had to drink out of. But it wasn't just like, hey, we're going to sit this boot outside. It was outside. People would... You jump in, in it. it. People would yep. all kind of, I'm, yep. I'm like, oh my yep. God, that and is And then you have to horrible. chug it. Yes, yes. I do remember Ugh. that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I didn't remember that when I was there, but she told me that and I was like, oh my God, that's uh-huh. disgusting. Uh-huh. But see, that's what everyone survived COVID though. You know, all the crap that we put in our body during college, it just prepared us for this. I guess. It's fine. Ugh, no, I'm good. <laughs> it grosses me out right now thinking yeah, about it. Right. <laughs> It was fun down there, though. I, I had a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Like I said, I was there for two years. I think what made it more fun is I wasn't going to school. I was just working. Oh, yeah. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I, I had roommates. Before I moved in with Andrew, I had roommates. I had three roommates. Uh, I was working at uh, Ed Schmidt here in Perrysburg. Okay. And uh, my one roommate was a math. He, he's getting his master's to be an accountant, but he was a math major. And then I had two biology majors, one who's a dentist and one who's a nurse practitioner, and then me. Just. <laughs> so you did real well for yourself. <laughs> so I was just I was just hanging out. I'd come home. We had a whiteboard. I'd come home, and there's like uh, chemical formulas and chemistry stuff on there. And I'm like, guys, can we just like draw boobs or something once? Right. Everyone- <laughs> <laughs> but I bet if we looked at bank accounts, you were you were way above everybody else at I was, that point. I was having fun. I was good. You yeah, know, I had I yeah. think I had two jobs at that, that yeah. at that time. So it was fun, and That's I worked fun. at Hunger Howie, so we always had pizza. Yeah, because my other roommate worked there too. Yeah, so we always had pizza there, so that helped. But oh, yeah, gosh. it was a good time. And then uh, a big difference living with three dudes and then moving in with one woman. You know, I so. lived with four girls and one guy, and then moved in with three boys. Mm. It was so much easier. It's yeah. just no one is arguing. It's <laughs> it's not like two people are fighting and like then you pick sides as to who you think is right. But these girls that I lived with are still the girls that like I'm going to go visit and yeah. we're still hanging out. I think I became better friends with them when I did not live with them anymore. Yeah, you can see that. Um, living with guys is so much easier. 
It's like we're just watching WWE. We're just hanging yeah. out. Like it's eating a pita pocket. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like that's just it. It was so it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. We would yell. We would all be in our rooms. They're studying. I'm playing video games. We'd all be in our rooms, and we. My dad had those old school projection TVs, so it yeah. was like gigantic. And he let me have it, so we took it down. I took it down there with me, and uh, we had our uh, Nintendo sixty four hooked up to it. And we we like I said, we'd all be in our rooms, and someone would just yell cart. Like Mario Kart. Yeah. And then we'd all just come out of our rooms. <laughs> and that TV was perfect because it split into four screens, but it was huge. Yeah. So it was like little your own little personal TV. And we'd go, go out there, play That's some video games, and then we'd all just go back in our, back in our rooms and we're yep. done. Yep. Yeah. Lack of responsibility. <laughs> Love it. Although we did try to have some responsibility. I think we each had our own little cabinet, like with our name on it, with our food, mm-hmm. our own dishes. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. we got to a point where there was just dishes in the sink. All right, we got to fix something here. So, guys, yeah, we had know. a chore chart. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to... I don't want to live in filth, but like that <laughs> we, was also I felt like it was like four years old. Like, yeah, yeah. We did know? we did play garbage Jenga a lot though. Like yes. how high? Can, and then after a while, it just became a game. Like yeah. we knew what we were doing. Yeah. Like how high can we get stacked this garbage yes. before somebody has to take it Absolutely. out? Absolutely. <laughs> Who did it? And did you also do the thing? This is where I learned that if you throw spaghetti at the wall and if it sticks, it's it's fully cooked. <laughs> I never. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so if you take my, my mother in law's Italian, I don't think that's something they do. Oh well, that's what us um, white <laughs> Americans do, apparently. Um, but it was like we'd be like, "Is the spaghetti done?" And I'll just throw a whole handful at the wall, and then we would just see how long it would stick there. <laughs> like days later, of like, yeah, the spaghetti's still on the wall. Oh <laughs> my god! Mateo has these these little like sticky balls that he got for Christmas, and they're they're almost like. Um, Squishy, okay. and he threw them on the ceiling. And, Are they still there? And they've been there for forever. And, and I, have they fallen down? He goes, yeah. Every once in a while, one falls down. I throw it back up. Yeah. But but it's it'll go like a whole month, and they're yeah. just up there. My and daughters have something like that, but it falls quicker. So they like to toss it up on the ceiling and then lay underneath of it and see if they can get it to smack them on the face. <laughs> oh my god! You know, like. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> yeah, but that's like that's like a half an hour of entertainment for our family. Yeah. It's just let's see if this thing will fall on my face. <laughs> this gross thing <laughs> yes. that's been yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that has dog hair all over yeah. it. And, yeah, put it in your eye. Yeah, you yeah. Guy. it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we both got softball games to get to, but I appreciate you coming out here. This is fun. Uh, early. Oh, I have two things that I yes. want to say before we end. Yeah. Um, I have a really weird list of. Like things that I want to do before I die. Okay. And one of them is be on three different dads. Oh, okay. I really want to be on three different dads. Right. I don't know why. Just okay. if you ever need a filler, yeah, for put sure. Put me in there. I want to do it. All right. And then um, I am working with a an amazing group of people who are raising money for leukemia. The, the Cinco de Mayo thing. Yes. Right. That's at yes. my park. Yeah. Yes. So we. I'm currently collecting. Yeah, it's at the park. You're right. Yeah. I have a fundraiser going that if I can link to it, it's to oh, yeah, find link, yep. um, a cure for blood cancer. And then we are putting a Cinco de Mayo party together yeah. at Glass City. If anybody wants to go, yeah, what's, I mean, it, it's on Cinco de Mayo. I don't it know. It is what, on right? Cinco de Mayo, okay. and it's going to be like a silent auction. You can get a chance to win a diamond. There's going to be a beat the heat where like you have to try like some sauces that are yeah super spicy. Yeah. Like it'll just it'll just be a really fun like just. Eat Evening out, if anyone wants yeah, to go. Yeah, it looks like fun. I have to talk to Andrew because I keep seeing it. You yeah. share it, and apparently somebody else that I know shares it too. Uh, yeah. I've seen it a couple of times, but uh, I told I got to tell Andrew about it because I think it'd be fun to go to. Yeah, yeah. Please. but I will put the links. Yeah, send me the links. Yeah, I'll will. put them in the show notes so people yeah. can click on them. Perfect. So yeah, well, well this was great, Megan. Thanks for uh, yeah. for coming on. This the podcast. is fun. I would love to do it. And, and, uh, and we'll definitely get you. You'll be the f- first <laughs> mom on three different yes. dads. Life goals. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks again to my guest, Megan Clark, for coming on the podcast. She was great. Great interview. She was nervous. She told me she was nervous at the beginning, but it went awesome. I uh, enjoyed talking about her nerd, nerd outs, um, what she was into lately, diving deep into her daughter's uh, thyroid development that she has. And uh, it's it's good to, to know, like, obviously, she's not just going to let it go, but, but to know her boundaries. Like, hey, I can only do so much my daughter has to do some but she also has to be a kid you know that's i'm assuming parents struggle a lot when their kids get diagnosed with certain diseases and ailments it's just a hard balance Um, but she's managing well along with her husband Uh, it was great listening to uh to that lawsuit that she was talking about which was wild i didn't you know think people would just come out and say that kind of stuff but apparently they did so that was cool uh talk about uh going to bg at the same time knowing a few of the same people on the rugby team so it's, it's interesting. That's two podcasts in a row where 
when we, we were younger, we knew each other. So uh, it, it's pretty cool to, to know all that information. But it was a great episode. And she talked about being on Three Different Dads. So I had to have her on, be the first mom on Three Different Dads. So uh, I'm excited for that. But uh, thanks again to her for her coming on the podcast. It was awesome. You know, and thanks as always to Fort Max CrossFit. Check out all the information they have to offer at fortmagscrossfit.com. Um, I can't thank them enough for allowing me to be up in their office recording uh, recording the podcast. As always, thanks to Big Daddy Graphics, Cuttlefish Graphics, Real G- JP Multimedia, and Perrysburg Junior High STEM Lab for always helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. <laughs>